Hey guys, it's John here with Monsters and Mazes. It's been a little while since my last video. I've been crafting like crazy, but not recording what I've been doing, unfortunately. Um, so I wanted to get a video out. I'm going to get a couple out in the next uh, few weeks. Um, but I wanted to do some shout outs. Uh, I've been basically making some furniture. I'm getting prepared for a Ravenloft campaign. And I finally got around to making scrolls, potions, uh, bookshelves, books. And uh, three people that I really were inspired by or copied, whatever you want to call, was uh, DMG Info, of course. Uh, and DM Blair Wolf, I really liked his uh, cheap and easy book way, uh, make cheap books. I'll show you here in a second. And Halloweenville. I liked uh, his his scrolls. He kind of took DMG's stuff and and tweaked it a little bit. So and I took all three of their stuff and and tweaked it a little bit. Uh, but I also want to give a shout out to Wylock. I uh, been making his tavern tiles, which I think are the best tiles out there. And for, for months, I was going to do a video on how to do a starter set on it, and then he came out with his true tiles, and I was like, oh man. And then I lost that video, so I'll just show you my completed ones. So this is going to be a hodgepodge, and it's also going to have just a bunch of little stuff that I've made. It's just kind of like, hey, I don't really want to do a separate video for all this stuff, so bear with me. There will be a lot. Um, kind of like Monster Mashup, I believe it is, uh, where he takes uh, Goodwill junk and turns it into role-playing treasure. So stick with me. Uh, I'll try to make it fast. Thanks. Hey guys, here's a uh, Wylock's Tavern Tiles that I've done. I uh, tweaked it just slightly. Uh, the biggest changes, uh, he, he ended up making these in the true tile system, but I basically cut the, the 45 so that you can have kind of interesting hallways, different corridors. In my starter set, I made like six of them, or I'm in the process of making six of them. I used his same paint scheme. One of the biggest thing that's different with mine is I used one inch popsicle sticks for the walls to give it more depth. And then I use little skinny sticks like uh, Starbucks coffee stirrers um, and stain them. I was going for that kind of English Tudor type look. And the thing that I really messed up on is going to that level of detail on my walls. These take about 10 minutes each, which takes forever and you go crazy. Uh, because I'm kind of OCD about this styrofoam, so I always put uh, white PVA glue and let it dry. And to give it a lot of strength, and that really slows the process down. He flies through his, and uh, I'm a snail's pace on mine. But kind of went with a similar paint scheme. Really like how it came out. Grays and a light tan. I'll try to show you the, the actual colors that I used on a pop up. But it, this is the same wood technique that he used, and I gouged the, the wood, put the, the banding or uh, cladding, whatever you want to call it. So mine's exactly like his, except uh, one inch popsicle sticks. And they've actually come out at Walmart with an inch and a quarter, which is awesome I would have probably have done that but uh, the one inch came out very nicely so here's what one looks like without the I basically hopefully you can see those marks I found uh, the halfway or the third points that I liked I can't remember the measurements but it's basically to however you want to see how many of these bands you want to see I just went with two so that way, like my snap-on windows, other little goodies that I'll make here and show you in the future, uh, can fit between those two. So, and I like how when they're they're set together, it kind of looks continuous. So, really like this. I made a ton of them. Here's a little setup. Hopefully, you can see some of this and. This is uh, what I'm going to show you here in a minute. Here's my potion rack. Uh, this is the same as DMG. It's, I use it. It's two inches, two inches. 
And then I used little popsicle, or not, sorry, not popsicle stick, those little match sticks on the bottom. This is exactly like DMG. The only difference is, is instead of the back, I used two one inch popsicle sticks and cut them. You can see the seam right here. And that really helps to square them up. And uh, really like how it came out. It gives it a ton of strength. And I used my hot glue gun. Here's one without the stuff on. I made, I think, nine of them at one time. I, I used a hot glue to do this. And basically just ran my hot glue and just smelted it. Or smelted it. Hey, there you go. Melted it in. And I really like how that looked. So you don't have to worry about big globs of hot glue. Just put it on there. And then I have a, a long-nosed one. Basically, I had a piece of black plastic, and I just cut that off. I got this at Super Bonder at Walmart, 8 bucks, And you can just smear, smear it in there. So it's, it's fast. It's great. It comes out really good. Um, so here's a... I got the idea of this spell book kind of from Dean uh, Blair Wolf. Uh, he takes little books like this with a thin edge, very thin edge, and then just cuts it, puts a straight edge and cuts it across here. I can't remember what he, he used. But I went to Goodwill and the key to getting the book is you don't want any staples in here. You want this to be a square edge. And some of these are little books and some of, whoops, sorry. Some of these are little books like this and some of these are the DMG popsicle method. But this is very fast. And the only thing that I would do, I, I don't know if he did this or not, is I would spray paint this before I cut it and that will speed the process up a lot. You don't wanna use craft paint right on this because it doesn't stick as well but spray paint or that testers paint I used uh, will stick right to this glossy surface but spray paint is a thousand times faster so you can just shoot it with black spray paint and then you can sponge what I did was sponge paint uh, the other ones and it came out with some really cool texture and then I just took a toothpick and some gold lines or red lines and some of the other ones and put it uh, put it on on the binding it came out great no this is but these are actual pages here so the binding is I mean it really makes the open books look great and it's super fast and super cheap especially if you go uh, when there's sales at Goodwill I bought a, a bunch of them and nice thing is, is you get different sizes different widths just slightly different so it really makes it look like how a bookshelf would look because everything's not the same size. Here's a picture of Halloweenville's, some of Halloweenville's uh, books and scrolls and uh, things like that that inspired me. I'll show you a link to, to that video. So I wanted to do mine very similar to his. And the thing that I did differently, I, I he used, uh, what his is different than DMG infos, is that he uses masking tape on the back uh, to give it strength, makes it really pliable, and it kind of looks like age paper, so I really like that. The thing that I did differently is I found stuff on the internet to print out, and I kind of did a lot of mine backwards because I wanted you to see the, the writing. And I would suggest putting some making them look like dark scrolls, like where it has black. Um, you can play, I did all mine on Microsoft Word. You can go into the, the picture formatting and kind of just go crazy with it. So I have a fireball scroll, I have a lightning bolt scroll. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but this was super fast and super easy to make. I uh, basically just made a ton of these things. And you get your pictures. There's the fireball scroll. And you can just go crazy. And then I just have little pieces of writing. And you shrink it down. And you can use those for all kinds of stuff. And one other thing I did 
which I don't know if he did or not, is I just made like sheets. I'm sorry. This is not going, it's going to be hard to see. I know. Just like sheets of paper. And I'm going to show that on uh, uh, some desk that I'm going to make. Uh, Halloweenville made some really cool desks. I'm going to do a, a play on that. Um, the thing that I did with this, you can see uh, these are just beads. And uh, I like how DMG put like labels on his. I think that kind of adds some stuff. And these tops, this is just a bead. And then this kind of a fluted toothpick top. And all this stuff is just beads, like just assorted beads. These skull beads I got at Walmart. Um, I highly recommend buying, uh, if you can find these, like it's a bag of plastic skull beads. Uh, I'll try to put a picture up uh, to show you what it looks like. But I'm going to be doing lots of crafts with these skull beads. Um, and everything else is, is pretty much just beads and knickknacks. Next I wanted to show you, uh, this is from just a junk pile. This was a My Little Pony register. It was this fluorescent pink with flowers all over the part. I just put a uh, cut off cardstock and filled it in over the flowers and then took my my gun and just ran it like this to give this wood texture. So this this wood texture covers up a lot. And then I put a popsicle stick. This was a a conveyor belt. And uh voila, I got this really awesome cash register. I use that format. I'm going to be all over the place. I use that where you just drag the, the hot glue to make the raised wood grain on all kinds of buildings. This is just single corrugated cardboard, and I had this as a goblin fortress. A little, uh, not fortress, kind of an entry to the, the goblin caves where the archers could shoot out. Super easy to make, but it's a great 3D element. And it really looks like wood. Here's another piece of furniture I made. I got this out of a Goodwill uh, bag of junk. It was basically like this. And I added, these are little stir sticks. These are um, pops, regular popsicle sticks. And these are just little beads. So I made this really cool armoire, or whatever you want to call it, just out of junk. It's, it's a really good skill. Another thing that I made out of junk is these like play school stuff. If you have a Dremel tool or, or whatever, you can grind that stuff out. And this is just that standard uh, wood technique where you spray paint, it, spray paint it black, put burnt umber all over it, and then uh, put that terracotta, and then put the honey brown, and then polyurethane it. And here's another, here's another real boat that I did the the same thing too so if you can go if you have a goodwill or uh, garage sales or whatever highly recommend hitting those up getting those toys and a dremel is worth a thousand thousand dollars uh here's a little woodsy i made a cheap table and that's just popsicle sticks at the end this is probably the worst table i've ever made but i figured i would show you because i'm going to show you with my raven loft i have this whole skull theme which is really awesome but I'm going to do a separate video on that. It's that good. Here is, I got a wagon out of the Goodwill thing. So this bottom piece is, is the wagon. Um, you can use uh, Dungeons and Glue Sticks, I think it is. Uh, shows you how to basically glue popsicle sticks together to make the wagon base. And then you can just cut your own wheels out. Uh, the only thing, so once you have that, I just have popsicle sticks as edging. And this is a tube. This circular piece is just a tube of, uh, it's not, it's bigger than uh, like toilet paper. It's, it was basically kind of like a mail tube. I cut it to size and then directly put on, uh, just glued card stock around it and then glued some of those square toothpicks to give the, the, the door. And I used that, that dragging 
technique that I just talked about with the Goblin Fortress all along it to make it look like raised wood. You could also use um, caulk to make it look like stucco if you wanted to, and toothpicks, or I'm sorry, popsicle sticks if you made it, wanted to make it look like, uh, kind of like the tavern tiles here. Um, the, and then I put regular popsicle sticks on the top and I made it to where it's totally playable where the characters can be on top and all around it. The, the cool part is the kickouts. And all that is is cardstock that I shaped this little edge, this little edge right here, and made a template when I was happy with it, fitted it on there, and did the same thing on the other side, and just glued it on. And it came out great. So this is going to be uh, my main uh, gypsy wagon for uh, Ravenloft. And here's another piece that you can make. I believe I got this idea from uh, DM Scotty. Uh, basically, I wanted a castle wall, and I didn't want to have storage problems, so just single corrugated cardboard. Basically just... Uh, creased it here, creased it here, there, and then glued a piece on the bottom. So this is separate, just to give it that overall height that I wanted. And then I cut out another piece here, gou or, uh, sorry, put the crenellations. And all this is is just cardstock little pieces just to simulate stone here. And then I did the same thing up here, but I cut uh, one inch squares and cut it in r rough circles, crumpled them up to give them some texture, which is kind of hard to see, and then glued that on so that I, I play gridless, but I, I wanted this gridded because I actually had it when I was running the campaign where the monsters would pop up based on what number I rolled. So I, I've used this a lot and this is just a generic wall section. It's a sponge pan like Dan Scotty, so very fast, very easy to do. Well, I know I went through a lot. Hopefully, I gave you guys some ideas. Uh, I'm going to have some other new stuff coming out very soon. Thanks.